that's going on here. God's going to bless it. Amen? Amen. 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 Galatians chapter 5, beginning in verse 1. The Apostle Paul writing, Galatians chapter 5, beginning in verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, yes, yes. and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ is become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law. You are fallen from grace. For we, through the Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Now this is Paul speaking to believers. I want you to keep that in mind. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. I want to read those last two verses, verses 5 and 6, one more time. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. And I want to use for a subject, ministering for just a few moments tonight, faith which worketh by love. Faith which works by love. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight, Lord, and we do so in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, Lord God. Father, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to preach and to teach your word. We thank you once again that you've given us this privilege to stand before these, your people, Lord God. And Lord God, I know tonight that there are hungry hearts, Lord, who desire to hear the truth of your gospel, Lord God. I know that there are hearts, Lord God, who maybe are, are searching and looking for the truth of the gospel, Lord. And I ask you that you would but anoint me, Lord, as your vessel, Lord God, to speak forth your word in clarity, Lord, and in power, Lord God. Father, we take authority, Lord, over every hindering, Lord, spirit that would come against this service tonight, Lord God. Every spirit of confusion, Lord, we bind it in the name of Jesus Christ. And we ask that your Holy Spirit would have the preeminence, Lord, that your power would have the preeminence over everything that we say and do in this place tonight. And we'll be sure when it's all said and done as we do now to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 The Apostle Paul, it is believed that the book of Galatians was probably the first epistle that the Apostle um, Paul would pen himself. Um, the church at Galatia would be founded in Paul's first missionary journey where you can see Paul and Barnabas traveling through in Acts chapter 13 and Acts chapter 14, places like Iconium and Achaia and places like these were the, were the region of Galatia. Galatia was not just one central city, but rather it was one central region, a place of multiple cities, multiple people, and multiple churches who received the gospel under the Apostle Paul. And you can see the first sermon that Paul would preach um, in this region of Galatia in Acts chapter 13. And Paul would go into the synagogue and they would ask and they would say, is there anyone here who wants to speak? And they would say, Paul, do you desire to say a word to us today? And of course, Paul would take every opportunity that he could to present the truth of the gospel just coming um, from his desert place experience, God just separating him and Barnabas for the work of the gospel. Paul had one heartfelt desire on his mind, and that was to preach and proclaim the truth of the word of Almighty God. And that's exactly what you would find Paul doing. As we said in Acts chapter 13, he would stand up and he would, he would accuse the Jews. He would say that it's your fault that the Messiah was crucified, but, but don't worry because if you'll just place your faith in Him again, He can save you from your sin and you can be justified of all things. And the next day, the Bible tells us that there was even a greater crowd that came back to hear the sermon that Paul had preached because he had preached it with such power and with such anointing, just like he would tell the church at Corinth when he came to them. He said, when I came to you, I came not with excellency of speech, <laughs> declaring unto you um, the wisdom of God. He said, but when I came to you, my preaching and my teaching was not with enticing words of man's wis wisdom, but it was in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. And the reason why it was in spirit 
and it was in power was because when I came to you, I determined not to know anything right. among you Amen. save Jesus Christ and him crucified. It's not because of Paul's person. It's not because of who Paul was, but rather it was because of what Paul preached that Paul uh, that 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 um, resulted in the results of what Paul seen in his earthly ministry. Amen. That's exactly why Paul seen the results that he did in his first missionary journey in Acts chapter 13. Even though later down the road in certain places that he would go, he would find persecution, he would find opposition, um, he would find places that, that would not turn out with the same results as it did in Galatia. But one thing he knew, that this first time that he stood up in public and preached the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with Barnabas at his side, he knew that there had been a change wrought in these cults, in these um, in these gulls. They were they were they were hard men. They were men. Um, they were much like Vikings. They were hard men, and they were they were fighting men. They wanted to fight. The um, historians tell us that that many battles that these Galatians would go into, they were called gauls. Many battles. They would go into, they would not lose many because they were tall and valiant men. They were strong men. And the only thing that they would carry with them was a sword and a shield. They didn't carry around, um, they didn't ride in chariots. They didn't carry around bows and arrows and spears and whatsoever the case. But they were strong and mighty men. And strong and mighty men were broken under the simplicity of the gospel. Let me tell you something. Strong and mighty men don't need to be related right. to on the same page. Come they on. need the gospel Amen. of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. An alcoholic does not need an, another alcoholic That's right. to come and give it's him fleshly. the gospel. All an alcoholic needs is anybody, it doesn't matter man, woman, boy, or girl, come to on. give them the truth of the gospel and their life can be changed Amen. and continually transformed by the power yes, of God. Yes. You know why? Because Paul was not a former Gaul. Paul was not a former self. He, he right. was a former Jew is what he Amen. was. He was a former keeper of the law, but the gospel was still the same. The gospel Amen. to the Jew was the same gospel that God desired to give to the Greek. That's right. The same gospel that God wants to give to the person bound by religion is the same <laughs> gospel He wants to give to the person bound by drugs and yes, by alcohol, yes, yes. bound by pornography, bound by lust, and everything else in between. The gospel is the same. It doesn't matter your creed, your ethnicity. It doesn't matter who you are, how old you are. It does not matter the method does not change. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 that God has chosen that through the foolishness of preaching that he would save those who would believe. We don't said. need a light show. We don't need a concert. We need the preaching of the gospel. Amen. We need the preaching of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, and yes. that's exactly what Paul would do founding the church of Galatia. And there would be such a great response and Paul would talk about it in Acts chapter 1, I mean in Galatians chapter 1 and Galatians chapter 3 and 4. He would talk about the first response that was given by the church at Galatia when he went to them with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Paul would say, when I first came to you, he said, if I needed, you would have plucked out your own eye if I would have needed your eye. He said, you would have died for me. You would have gave your life for me. You were giving me finances. You would have given me money. You would have given me whatsoever it is that I had need of when I first came to you because I gave you the truth. And the truth is what transformed yes, and changed yes. your life. Amen. Like I said a minute ago, and I didn't plan, if somebody's giving you the truth of the gospel, let me tell you something. You're going to want to do anything and everything you can. When you start seeing the results of the gospel taking place in your life and you see your life being transformed slowly and completely by the power of God, you're going to want to do anything and everything you can to help that individual to um, to further the gospel of Jesus Christ that's emanating from their life yes, and from their amen. being. And that's exactly what the church at Galatia was desiring to do. They wanted to support Paul. They wanted to be with Paul. They wanted to see Paul. And that's what Paul would say. Paul would say, you, you literally, like I said, he said, you literally would have plucked your eye out if I would have asked you to and gave it to me because you received the gospel of Christ in such a powerful way. Amen. He would say that when I preached to you that it was as if Jesus Christ had been physically evidently crucified among you. Yeah. 
yes. the, 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 the gospel that I preached was with such power Amen. and with such Christ. magnitude that Lord when I God. preached, you Praise did not God. see my person. Yes. And that's what I was praying Amen. in the pew just a moment ago Praise is, God. God, when I stand behind a pulpit, I don't want people to see me any longer. For a long time, my desire was that people would see Ross and people would hear Ross. But now my desire is becoming, I'm not there perfectly yet, but my desire is becoming mm -hmm. as Lord when I stand behind the sacred yes, death. Yes. I want people Glory. to see Amen. Jesus Christ. Yes. I want yeah. Jesus Amen. Christ, as Paul said, Amen. to be manifestly given as an image before you. Glory. That's exactly what I want when I stand Glory. behind this desk. When any true minister of the gospel stands behind the sacred desk, their number one Amen. desire should should always be, and as I said, it's a process. It's it's not something that just happens overnight, John, because Mike, Mark, I know you know what I'm talking about because um, at first, when you first start to minister, you want people to see you. You want people to hear what you've got to say. Come you on. want everybody to see how much right. you know. Right. Yes, but, when the, but when the love of Christ Glory begins to, to constrain your yes. heart yes. and yes. the love of Glory. Christ Glory. begins to move in your heart, you say, God, it's not about yes. me. Yes. I feel like, yes. because Glory. let me tell you something. Sometimes you, uh, sometimes yes. I don't want to stand behind a pulpit. Yes, that's right. Sometimes I've been asked to preach, and I know the, I'm, the schedule's coming along and the date's coming along, and I say, God, my flesh is all in a mess. The devil's beating me up, beating me up left and right, doing this, that, and the other. I see sin and this and that in my life. And God, I don't want to stand behind a pulpit, but at the same time, there's an unction of yes, the Holy yes, Ghost on yes. the inside Hallelujah. of me that yes. says, Come I've on. got to get behind that yes, pulpit. Yes. Because if I get behind that pulpit, there's an opportunity that somebody, be it a man, woman, boy, or girl, can be changed and transformed by the knowledge and the truth that I know. And it's not because I know it, but it's because God the Holy yes, Spirit has yes. implanted it into me. Hallelujah. Has he implanted it into me, but he's yeah. causing me Come on. He's causing me to be conformed into the very message that I yes, preach yes, and I yes. proclaim. And that's why Mike said it so greatly yeah. and profoundly this morning, that you must not just stand up and preach a message, but you better see to it that your life is becoming the very message yes, that yes. you preach Amen. and you proclaim. And Amen. that's why Paul would say in Galatians Amen. chapter 4 to this church at Galatia, he would say, I travail in birth for one thing, not that you might look better, not that you might sound better. I don't travail in birth as a woman does in birth so that you can you can, you can can excite yourself Come emotionally on. and do this, that, Come and on. the other. He said, no, this cause, for this cause I travail in birth, that Christ would be formed yes, in you. Yes, That's yes. the number one desire of, of the Apostle Paul's heart is that Christ would be formed yes. in every single Hallelujah. person that sits under the sound Amen. of his whoa, voice. Whoa. And if that's yes. not your yes. if that's God. not your desire, minister of the Most High God, then you must get back on your face and get back on Come your on. knees and say, God, you've got to transform and change my heart because yes, yeah. if I'm not becoming the message that I preach, then the effects of your message will not be what you desire it to be. Yes, because Amen. when I stand behind this pulpit, people are going to see me rather than seeing the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, but yes. if you continually stay on your face before God and say, God, I don't have what it takes to stand behind the sacred desk. God, I don't have what it takes to proclaim your word to your people. But Lord, I know that the spirit of Almighty God that dwells on the inside of me has what it takes. Yes, he yes. doesn't just have what it takes, but he has more than what it takes Come on. to manifest the yes. life of Christ yes. through Praise me. So God. when people look at me, they're not really seeing me, but they're seeing the life of Christ manifested through my mouth Amen. and through my actions. Amen. Yeah. Because the gospel is not just preached Amen. through your verb ministry, the gospel needs to be preached through your physical lifestyle ministry. Right. Amen. Yeah. You've got to become this message. Am I saying you've got to be perfect in order to be a preacher of the gospel? God forbid. Because like Paul said, and I said it last night in Philippians chapter 3, I have not yet attained, nor have I arrived. But he said, this one thing I do, I press toward yes. the mark for the prize Amen. of the high calling of God in Christ Amen. Jesus. And I believe that half of that high calling is being conformed into the image of the Lord yes, Jesus yes. Christ. A place that you and I, I don't care who you are, how much of a man or a woman or God you are, it does not matter. A place that you will not completely arrive to until you're raptured out of this place and go home to see Amen. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Paul would say that the gospel was evidently, um, it was as Christ was evidently crucified among you. 
That's how powerful, that's how with that's with how much anointing mm -hmm. that God anointed me to preach this message of the cross. That's the same anointing I want. Yeah. That's the same anointing that I desire yeah. as, as, a, as a speaker of the Most High God. Is that when I stand up that the people would literally see Jesus Christ and His work of the cross. That's what I desire. Amen. I desire an anointing that doesn't glorify me or my ministry. I desire an anointing that does not glorify my work. But I desire a ministry and an anointing that glorifies yes. the work yes. Yes. of the yes. Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I desire a ministry that doesn't glorify me as a man. Now at times does the enemy and does my flesh rise up and say, Oh, it'll be good if you go this way. It'll be good if you say this, that, and the other. Of course. Because everybody wants somebody to like them. Come on. But I'm here to tell you the Spirit of God in me unctions me and overrides my flesh and overrides the enemy that, that, that comes against me and whispers that in my ear and says it doesn't matter if you'll just stand up and preach my truth. I promise you that I'll anoint you with fire. And I promise Amen. you that when you proclaim my word, they're not going to see you, but they're going to see Jesus. Amen. And that's Amen. the anointing that I desire. You, and that was the anointing. That was the power. That was the message that drew the Galatians to Paul. And when, 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 when they would be drawn to someone such as Paul, Paul would say, follow me as I follow Christ. Yes. Don't follow me for who I am, but follow the example that I lay before you. We need more ministers of the gospel that are laying examples before their people. We need ministers of the gospel who are being changed and transformed in their hearts and lives, um, just as was the Apostle Paul, so that their people can not only hear something coming out of their mouths, but that their people can see something being transformed in front of their eyes. It's not about perfection, but it's, it's, it's about direction, John. Amen. It's not about being perfect, but it's about the direction that I'm traveling. Amen. And I want to be a minister who grabs along with somebody else and says, Brother, sister, I'm not perfect, neither are you. But if you come with me, I'll take you in the come direction on. that you need to go because I'm headed there myself. Hallelujah. We've got too many ministers standing behind the pulpit acting like they've arrived at some kind of quota or some kind of status. And they talk down to their people. God did not call you to talk down to your people or talk down upon your people. God called you to come alongside yes, of your people yes, and yes. be a servant yeah. to your people. Amen. Jesus said, I, Jesus said, I didn't come into this world to be served, but I came to serve. Yeah. I came to be a servant Amen. to the people. Minister, preacher of the gospel, God did not call you to be a master and a yes, slave, yes. a slave driver over your people. Right. He did not call you to give your people rules and regulations to keep them under control. He did not call you preacher of the gospel to tell your people where they can and where they cannot That's go. Right. God the Holy Ghost calls preachers to stand before their Come congregation on. and say that I'm in the same boat that you yes, are. But yes, if you yes. hold my hand, I'll take you Amen. to the one who can change Come you on. and can change me. Yes, because yes. we both are in the process of being changed. Amen. Amen. I don't want to sit under a man of God who thinks that he's been changed <coughs> enough in order to be something oh, over on. somebody else. I want to sit under somebody who realizes that they're in the same boat that I am and they need the same blood that I need yes. and they need the same Savior that I need and they need the same grace that I need. Praise God. Amen. Too many ministers standing behind pulpits acting like there's something lording over their congregation. I don't want any of that. That was not the heart of the Apostle Paul. If you think that that was the heart of the, the Apostle Paul, then you're the utmost foolish. You would read in, in, in the next chapter over in Galatians chapter 6 that if your brother be overtaken in a fault, then you who are spiritual, restore him. That's right. Not you who are spiritual, come and beat him over the head. Not you who are spiritual, come and give them rules and laws and regulations. Not you who are spiritual, show them how much more spiritual come on. that you are. No, you who are spiritual, give them what you suppose. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. You have. Come on. Give them That's the gospel good of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're almost Come foolish on. if you think that the Apostle Paul was prideful in, in himself because he would say, God forbid that I should glory That's right. say in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. You're the utmost foolish if you think that the Apostle Paul's heart's desire was to see himself lifted up because he Come said on. in Romans chapter 9, he said, if I could, I would be accursed for yes, my own that's brethren. What he, said. he said, my desire is to see every man, woman, boy, and girl that hears what I have to say go into the eternal heavenly yes, 
heavenly. Yes, yes. My desire is not self-glory. My desire is not to lift myself up. My desire is to see children of God not only get into the kingdom Come of on. God, but on their way to the kingdom of God, yes, see yes, them filled yes. with the power of Almighty God, not yes. to see them come alongside of me and fulfill my agenda. That's right. But to see them come alongside of me and fulfill the agenda of the kingdom yes, of Almighty that. God. That's what and we the need. The agenda of the kingdom of Almighty God is not feeding a hungry community. Come it's on. Not giving the community and the world what they desire come and on. what they need, but the, 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 the method and the reason for the kingdom of God, the purpose of the plan of God, come the on. purpose of the kingdom of God is seeing sinners saved. Yes, yes, Jesus. yes. Seeing yeah, that's God right. Saved empowered by the grace of Almighty God. Come on. That one day when Jesus returns, one day when that trumpet sounds, that they're not all beat up, tattered, and bruised and barely making it into the kingdom of heaven. But like Jesus said, I'm not coming back for a church that's, that's right. like that. But I'm coming back for yeah. a church that is yeah. without spot. Yes, and without yes, blood yes. Blood in the blood of the Amen. Lord. Preacher, yeah. your, preacher, your number one priority should be to number one, save souls. And to number, number two, keep those souls and That's the grace right. and the power Come of on. Almighty God. Oh, yeah. Yes, amen. Right. The church is dying. I'm talking about those who are saved. The book of Galatians was written to a church That's who right. had already been saved by the power of God. Preacher, don't you tell me that the cross is good for salvation, but then I've got to do something else. Come you're on. a liar and That's you're right. sending your people to hell. That's and if right. you don't stop, the blood of their souls will be yes, 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 yes. and you will find yourself in an eternal hell. Come on. That's right. Amen. Amen. Right. The cross of the Lord Jesus Christ is not just for salvation. That's right. But the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ has met every single need that I have need of this yeah. day. And it will give me the power and the grace to make it through Whoa. this hell hole of a life until come on. Jesus decides to yes, come back yes, and rapture yes. my soul out of here. Amen. Amen. Preacher, you're a liar and you'll burn in hell if you don't give your people the truth of the gospel yes, of the Lord man. Jesus Christ. I know that's strong words, but it's the truth Come of on. the gospel. And I will not back down that's right. from proclaiming that because Paul said in the first chapter of this book, he said, I marvel that you're so soon removed from the gospel that I brought unto you. He said, I don't care if it's an angel or anybody else. He said, if anyone comes unto you preaching another gospel, let them be accursed. That's right. And First in the Greeks means let them be eternally damned and separated from God the Father, God the Son, and God yes, the Holy yes. Ghost. Amen. Right. Right. So now that you've come into this thing, now that you've held fast to this gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, now that you've been changed by the power of God and you've began, uh, listen to what I said, you've began to hear the message of the cross, you've began to grow in the grace of and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because, because let me tell you something. I've been hearing the message of the cross for almost five years now. And I've just begun <laughs> to hear Amen. the message of the cross. Hey, come on. I've just begun come on. to get into the process of, the, process of this thing. I, I have not arrived. And I can promise you and my brothers here that live in the dorms with you can testify that I have not arrived yet. <laughs> Amen. Mike told me the other day. Well, not the other day, but a couple months ago. He said, I'm going to tell you something. He said, if it was up to me, he said, you would have been the last person that I would have chose to have been used in ministry with. <laughs> that's what Mike told me. I know that's funny, but that's really what he told me. He said, you're the last person that I would have chose for God to bring me together with. But it doesn't matter because the bands of the Spirit were so strong. Oh, God the Holy Ghost Lord. brought us together and said, I'm going to use you to do a mighty work. And even though Mark didn't say it in his own words, I know he was thinking the exact same thing. Because I seen the look on his face when I told it when I told it to him the other day. I said, man, can you believe what Mike told me the other day? And when I said it, he just kind of got a grin on his face and he said, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> believe me, I know I'm a work in progress. I know Amen. I ain't made it yet. Amen. And you see, once we receive the gospel, once we receive the truth of the gospel, there are going to be some things... That, you, that, you, that you're going to have to learn very quickly. Number one, you've got to know something. Now that you've received the truth of the gospel, now that you've received the truth that Jesus Christ died for my sins, not only died for my initial salvation, but died to give me power over sin, died to set me free from the law, died to do all these things for me, to heal me, deliver me, baptize me with the Holy Spirit, and died to also glorify me. Once you know all these things, I'm here to tell you, you're going to have to fight for what you believe. Yes. Did you hear what I said? You're going to have to fight 
for what you believe. Come on. Yes, yes. Because number, because I can tell you this. First and foremost, your flesh is a deceptive thing. That's right. What do I mean your flesh? I mean that on the inside of you that wants to go the opposite direction of that which God has called us to go. Because God has given us a prescribed order of victory. That's right. Yes, and at yes. the ministry in Baton Rouge, we, we, we've come up with the term, or the professors, or Brother Swagger has come up with the term that Jesus Christ is the source of all blessings we receive from God. And the cross of Christ is the source, by, um, is the means by which uh, these blessings can flow to us. That's right. And number three, the Holy Spirit is the one who superintends this. The Holy Spirit is the one who takes that which comes from Jesus brings it through Calvary and gives it to the believer. Amen. But let me tell you something. Your works. flesh is in total contradiction right. to that process. Right. Yes, yes. Your flesh is in total contradiction. Well, how do I know? Because look in the garden. Look at Adam and Eve in the garden. Eve had a godly desire. Her desire was to be like God. That's right. Do you hear what I'm saying? Come on. She had a desire um, that could have been godly in a right way, Mike. She had a desire that said, I want to be like God. I want to live in righteousness and holiness. And I don't know if that's all what she said, but she said, I want to be like God because that's what Satan um, brought to her. Yes, yes, that's We're right. We're saying you want to be like God. So here, I'm going to give you the way to be like God. Mm. But Satan gave her a false way. That's right. You see, on top of your flesh deceiving you, telling you that you need to go another way, the enemy will see to it that someone or something is brought before your eyes or brought to your ears to, to, to show you and lead you in a wrong direction. Come on. And at the church of Galatia, what we find preeminent was the Judaizers who came in. It was only about a year or a year and a half, um, supposedly, that um, the Apostle Paul wrote this letter from his time of going there. So literally, he, he, he comes in to the region of Galatia. He preaches the blood of Jesus Christ. He preaches that Jesus Christ is the Messiah and that if you believe on Him, you can be justified from all things. And there's a mighty move of the Spirit. There's a mighty outbreaking of the Spirit of God. Jews and Gentiles alike are getting saved. And of course, Gentiles accept His message more than the Jews because the Jews got mad and said, Paul, you got to go. But the Gentiles came to Him and said, hey, give us more of what you just told us. Amen. There was a mighty outpouring of the Spirit of God and a bunch of Gentiles, a bunch of Galatians got saved. But only a year and a half later, here we find possibly, I said, possibly a year and a half later, we find the Apostle Paul writing back to them and saying, hey, what, what are you doing? I gave you the truth of the gospel when I was there with you for a few weeks, and now you've already left it. What's going on? What happened was the Judaizers came into the church of Galatia, they would follow Paul everywhere he went because you would see Paul, Paul, um, Paul talk about it in, in, in the book of Philippians as well. Um, he, he would talk about them and accuse them in Colossians and Ephesians. Everywhere Paul went, every church that Paul went to, here came the Judaizers on his coattail, following behind what he would preach, and they would come in claiming that they had higher authority, claiming that they had higher um, power from Jerusalem, saying that they came from Jerusalem, and they would come in and contradict the message of the Apostle Paul. Yes, right. yes. They would come in and try to distort and try to change what the Apostle Paul preached. When the Apostle Paul would go into these churches, the Holy Ghost spoke to Paul and said, when you go in there, you preached Christ and Him crucified. That's what he said. But these Judaizers would come in and say, yeah, Christ crucified. That's, that's a good preaching. Come that's on. a good teaching. But... Yes, come on. See, anything added to Christ and Him crucified totally makes the message of Christ and Him crucified void. That's right. Because the, Christ, because the message of Christ and Him crucified is a singular message. It is a message, and not only is it a message, but it is a method um, that God has instituted from before the foundations of the world. Amen. It is a method right. that God has instituted that man, fallen man, fallen from God, fallen from grace, fallen from His presence. It's a method that God says that this is the way that That's I'm right. going to restore to man everything that he lost in the fall. And not only am I going to restore to man everything that he lost in the fall, but I'm going 
going to restore to myself the relationship that I've desired to have Amen. with my highest creation Amen. throughout time Praise and eternity. God. So it's always been the method of God all the way, as I said Friday night, all the way from the garden when God clothed Adam and Eve in animal skins, a type of what we are in Christ Jesus, hid from God, hid of our sin. Now we can come to God acceptable and holy in His sight, not because of who we are, but because His Son has wrapped us and clothed us in His righteousness. Amen. You see, the gospel message, the gospel of Jesus Christ, not only gives man access to God, but it also gives God access yes, to that's man. Right. Right. Now, what do I mean? Paul tells us in Romans chapter 5 that now that we've been justified by faith, now that we've come in by the blood, he tells us that we have access to God. He said, now you have access to God. The same way that you've been justified is the same way that you have continual access to the throne of God. What does that mean? That means, number one, I've been washed from my sins. I'm no longer a sinner. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. But that also tells me that whatever I have need of, as Paul said in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19, that all my needs have been supplied according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So that tells me that His riches that He has supplied for me come to me by Christ Jesus. Amen. The only way I can receive those things is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. So I have continual, unbarred access to the throne of Almighty God, not yes. just for my salvation, but as well for power in this present day and hour in which I am living. Amen. I have power now over sin. I have power over the law. I have power over the powers of darkness, not because of anything that I've done, not because of anything um, that I've performed, but all because of the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because as I said the other night in Colossians chapter 2, the Apostle Paul tells us that Jesus Christ took care of everything. He goes down in a list and everything that ailed man, everything that came against the heart of man was addressed in Colossians chapter 2. Sin was addressed. The law was addressed. And and, and more than all that, the powers of darkness were addressed. So I don't have to worry about sin any longer. I don't have to worry about the law condemning me any longer and even more than that I don't have to worry about the powers of darkness um, um, having victory over me any longer because they've already been defeated yes. not only were they defeated but God the Holy Ghost um, throughout the annals of time he made a show of them triumphantly yes, triumphing yes, yes. over them in it Amen. that's what he did he made a show of of them openly before b- b- before all the spirit ran before all the angelic hosts in heaven before all the redeemed that have gone on before us and and more importantly than that before all the powers of darkness for him to mock the powers of darkness there was a parade in the spirit ram with Jesus in the front and the powers of darkness behind him Come on. dragging them with the chains yes, yes. saying that I have been victorious Preacher. over the very thing that thought yeah. it was victorious Come on. over me Come Hallelujah. You see, Satan's greatest tactic is not really his power, but it's his knowledge. Come on. Oh, my Lord, I oh, that's thought good. about that, but that's, that's right. It's not his power because his power has been rendered from him. His power yes, has come been on, that's taken good preaching. from him. But the greatest gift, the greatest power that Satan really has is the gift of deception. It's what yes. he knows and what he doesn't know. And more importantly, it's, he, he, he takes advantage of what you know and what you no, don't know. Because come on. he knows that's good. that if you'll grab a hold of the message of Jesus Christ and him crucified and that and that alone he knows not only will you be saved from your sin come but on. he knows that the power my lord I feel it come on. the power yes, of yes. sin Hallelujah. that come the on. power of sin is going to be broken over your life Praise and God. not only that but he knows that if you grab a hold of the blood of Jesus yes. because it was at the cross where yes. the blood was shed come on. and he was defeated he knows that if you grab a hold of that and that alone that he can have no more rule and reign Hallelujah. Forever and forever Amen. because he was defeated by the very same thing that you're Oh, yes. Yeah. So come on. If you Praise have God. The cross, that, is good you come on. That, can, that, can, that can have dominion over you, whether it be come sin, on. whether it be the law, or whether it be the devil, all of them have been defeated and rendered yeah. useless Amen. through Calvary's cross. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. So Satan's greatest tactic is not really the power that he thinks he possesses, but it's really the knowledge that he knows. And it's the the deception to cause you 
to sway from the knowledge that is being presented unto you. And that's why I told you just a minute ago that now that you are beginning to be changed by this message of the cross, now that you are beginning to be transformed and you're grabbing a hold um, that Jesus Christ is the source of everything that you receive from God and it's the cross that makes it possible in order for you to receive it. Now that he knows you're grabbing a hold of that, he's going to come along and do anything and everything that he can within his power to move you away from the doctrine that you've been placed into because Romans chapter 6 and verse 17 says literally in the Greek that you've been placed into this doctrine which you have believed. You didn't just believe this doctrine and you become a part. No, the, the, the God, the Holy Ghost literally said that when you believe the doctrine that was preached to you, I placed you in to the very doctrine that you believe. Amen. Amen. So when you believe the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, when you believe that I've been crucified, buried, and resurrected with the Lord Jesus Christ, now you literally become one with that gospel. And Satan's effort is to move you away from that which you have been placed yes, into. Yes, yes. So now that you're beginning to receive the message of the cross, now that you're beginning to learn and grow in the message of the cross, you've got to see to it that, number one, you stand fast. That's right. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes. You've got to stand fast in the liberty wherewith yeah. Christ hath made you free. Amen. And I don't know if you know it or not, and if you don't, I'm going to declare it to you. That where you've been made free was at the cross of the yes, Lord Jesus yes, Christ. Yes, yes. That's where God the Holy Ghost, through the annals of time, chose that He would set men free. Even men like David under the Old Testament knew that it was more than just Himself. Knew that it was more than what He could conjure up and do within His own power. For He said in Psalms chapter 51, He said, God, you don't delight in burnt sacrifices, but you delight in a broken heart and a contrite spirit. So he would put the responsibility upon God. He would not take the responsibility upon himself, but he would say, God, it's up to you. You've got to purge me with yes, this yes, and yes. cleanse me with oh, the precious Lord blood God. of the Lamb. Cleanse David us, didn't Lord. say, I'm going to purge myself. Yes, yes. But David repented and said, God, I have sinned before you. Yes. But if you, if you yeah. will purge me with his so Come on. I know that I can be made righteous and clean Glory and, to God. and I can Amen. be holy and stand unblameable before you. Yes, even men yes. like Abraham before the law was even given looked up to heaven and God the Holy Ghost spoke down to Abraham and said Abraham if you believe me I'll impute my righteousness unto oh, you. Hallelujah. And Abraham looked back up to heaven and said God I believe. Oh, and and God. Throughout, throughout the Old Testament and throughout the New alike, Abraham is one of the most quoted men of God throughout the entirety of the Word of God. And it's not because of what Abraham did or who Abra Abraham was. That's right. But it was because of what Abraham did. Yes, yes, yes. And Paul would say in the previous chapters of this very book that we're reading tonight that the promise was given to Abraham not through the law because when the promise was given to Abraham, the law was not even That's given right. yet. The law would come some 430 years later after Abraham was long dead and long in paradise. So the right. promise would not come to Abraham or to anyone else through the law. But the promise of redemption, the promise of salvation, the promise of blessing and prosperity yes, yes, would not yes. come through anything that I can do. But it would come through the hearing of faith. Yeah. And the faith that I have yeah. is faith in Jesus Christ and what he's done at the cross. Hallelujah. Because Paul said that the gospel was preached to Abraham. That's he didn't right. say something else or a rule or a law or, or a conscience thought was preached to Abraham. Abraham. No, he said the gospel. Read it yourself in Galatians chapter 3. He said the gospel was preached to Abraham. And because Abraham believed the yes, gospel, hallelujah. Jesus said in John chapter 8 that he rejoiced and was exceedingly glad. Meaning, as our professor said, that Abraham had a Pentecostal. Ah, come on. He seen the eternal plan of God hallelujah. unfold before yes, his yes. very eyes. Hallelujah. My Lord. Come on. Amen. The eternal plan of God 
It's the same and always will be the That's same. That's right. It's Jesus Christ. Man, I've been saying it for three nights in a row, but I can't stop. Come on. The eternal plan of God is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Yes, yes. It's Jesus Christ in the morning. It's Jesus yes. Christ in the evening. It's Jesus Christ when I wake up in the spirit of in the middle of the night right. and, and, and I'm being buffeted by the spirit of Satan and I'm being buffeted by my sin and my flesh and I'm in despair and I don't know what to do. It's Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Yes, hallelujah. That's all it has been and that's all it ever will be. Hallelujah. And that's why Paul declares unto you in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1, stand fast. Yes, yes. yes. Amen. When opposition Amen. comes against you, stand Amen. fast. Yes. When Satan himself comes against you, stand fast. Yes. When sin rises up in your life and you realize that I'm not yet what I need to be, oh, stand yes. fast in the liberty wherewith Christ yes. hath Amen. made you free. Go down to verse 4. In Galatians 5, Paul said, and I'm wrapping it up. Paul said, Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are, are justified by the law, you're fallen from grace. Yes. Now, is this, does this mean that every time I fail, I fall from grace? God forbid. No, 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 no. Not every time that you fail, you fall from the grace and the effectual working of God's Spirit. No. When you fall from grace, in order to fall from grace, that means that you have to place your faith in something other than the redemption plan of God. That's right. To fall from yeah. grace means yeah. that you've either, you've either added to God's redemption Come plan on. or right. you've taken away from God's redemption That's right. plan. That's what it means to fall from grace because the only avenue by which the power of the Holy Ghost can be made evident and move effectually in your life is through the plan that God has laid before you. That's why the Bible says in Romans 8, 1 and 2, there's no condemnation to those of us who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. And he would say, for the law of the Spirit of life That's in right. Christ Jesus. So the law of the Spirit of life, the very power of life, the very power of resurrection I need comes through my identification with Jesus Christ in His death, burial, and resurrection. So what gives me uh, the ability to receive grace and power from God is the same thing on a continual basis that gave me the ability to be saved from my sins. It's the same plan and always will be. The same plan that got me in is the same plan that keeps me Amen. in. Amen. I know it's simple and I know um, you've heard it already, but you've got to hear it over and over and over and over. Because like I said, your flesh is deceptive. And your flesh wants to go in a different direction other than the direction that God the Holy Ghost has laid before you. That's right. If that were not the case, Paul would have not... Um, wrote what he wrote in this book of Galatians. He would have not wrote what he wrote in the book of Colossians when he said, Beware of philosophies and vain deceits that come and try um, the accoutrements of this world that come and try to grab you away from what um, he said, As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so ye walk in Him. But beware of those things that try to come and pull you away from that. So that's why he tells us to stand fast. That's why he tells us that you're not falling from grace unless you add or take away from the redemption plan of God. And that's why he brought up circumcision because the Judaizers were saying, yes, the gospel of Christ and Him crucified is good, but you need to be circumcised as well. You need to be circumcised just like your father Abraham was. And if you're not physically circumcised like Abraham was, then you can't receive the promise um, from God that He desires to give you. But Paul would refute that and say, not only was Abraham not under the law when he received the promise, but he was not even circumcised right. when God gave him the promise. That would come later. So it's nothing that you can or cannot do that causes you to receive anything from God. Nothing you can do. The only thing that, that is on your plate to do is to believe is to place your faith in Christ and what He's done at yeah. the cross and avail yourself to the leading and the guiding of the yes, Holy Spirit yes. as He instructs you to pray, as He instructs you to get into His Word, as He shows you where to go and what to do. God requires that you believe. As I said it last night, I'll say it again tonight. God's not asking you to produce fruit. God is asking you to bear fruit. Amen. 
there's a difference because right. if I'm producing it in and of myself, that means that I'm doing something in order for it to come forth. But if I'm simply bearing fruit, it simply means that I'm an avenue through which another source is flowing um, nutrients through me. Yes, and and the on, fruit is not being produced by me. It's simply being bore. I'm simply a stick or a branch that is giving the vine um, an avenue through which his power can flow so Amen. that fruit can hang from my vine. Amen. That's all I am. I'm a branch. Yes. Jesus said, I am the vine, you're the branches. Abide in me and I'll abide in you. The same instruction... The same instructions that Jesus gave in John chapter 15 is the same instructions that Paul's giving you here in Galatians chapter 5. Abide in me. Stand fast in me. It's Amen. the same instruction. Abide Amen. and stand fast is literally the same That's exact right. thing. Yes, to stand fast literally means to remain and abide in what you've been placed. Amen. God. So literally, he tells us to stand fast. And he tells us if you want to nullify, if you want to negate, if you want to cause the grace of God that's flowing um, into your life to be of no effect, then place your faith in something other than Christ and the cross. Add something to the message of the cross. Add something or take away um, something from the message of the cross. Let me tell you something. The Word of God is the Word of God. You can't add to this thing or take away from this thing. It is what it is, and it will do what it says it can do, but it can Amen. only do what it says it can do if you follow the plan that God has laid yeah, before you right. in this book. Amen. And that plan is Christ and Him crucified. Verse 5. Paul said, For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Now, now this is kind of a twofold verse. Because, because number one, when we first read this verse, really what comes to our mind when we say, when we see that we wait for the hope of righteousness, and I'm closing, just give me just a moment. I see some of you getting tired on me. But uh, when he says we wait for the hope of righteousness, initially when we look at this, we say, okay, well, uh, that means that we're waiting for the rapture. We're waiting for the ultimate fulfillment of righteousness. And that is true. That is partially correct because we are waiting for that glad and glorious day when the trump of God's going to sound and the dead in Christ shall rise and we that are alive and remain shall caught up to meet him in the air. And I've got a lot of family members there. I'm ready to meet them. But until that day, I'm not just waiting for that day as a fulfillment That's of right. righteousness. Come but on. since I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus, let, let me tell you this. When you begin to grab a hold of the message of the cross, you're going to see two things happening within you. Number one, you're going to begin to see the fruit of the Holy Spirit being produced in your life. But number two, the negative aspect, but it's not so negative because what it does is bring you back to your knees and brings you back to Calvary. But the second aspect of it, you're going to begin to see how far away you truly are from what God really yes, intends yes. for you to be. Come on. See, that's a bad thing and that's a good thing. It can be a bad thing if we if we treat it with the in the wrong manner. And most of the church, John, is treating it in the wrong manner because most of the church tells you that when you sin or when you fail or when you don't see the righteousness of Christ being produced in you, number one, either you don't love God enough and you need to go somewhere else because apparently you don't really love God. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Don't you ever believe that because of sin you see in your flesh or because of failures, it means you, you don't love God. No, the simple fact of you being heartbroken over your yeah. failure and your sin mm -hmm. tells me that you are in love with the Savior that saved you from your sins on, and you man. want to please Him and serve Him in righteousness. Amen. So number one, they tell you you don't love God or number two, they tell you you love God but you need to work a little bit harder and both of those things are just as much a lie That's as right. the other That's one right. is. Come on. Right. Because when you see failure, when you see sin, let me tell you something, what you need to do is not look, okay what can I do to change this? What? No, because it's Come not on. a habit, it's sin. It's deeply rooted. Yes, in yes, yes. If it was a habit, God would have given us another um, another way of victory. He would have said, just change your habits. Change your routines. Change the things that you do. No, but he said, when you have a sin problem, come back to Calvary. Amen. That's what he tells us. Amen. And waiting for the hope of righteousness is you begin to, when you begin to grab a hold of the message of the cross, you're going to see things in your life more than ever, you're going to see sin. You're going to see the flesh. You're going to see things that are not in line with the truth of the Word of God, not in line with the Spirit of God. And it's up to you to continue to believe the same thing that you have been taught. And as I said it last night, when God the Holy Ghost begins to change you, the things that you want changed in your life are not going to be changed overnight. It's a continual process. Yes, it and is. it's a long and it's a dreadful, sometimes dreadful and sometimes hurtful process. Yes, it yes. does hurt, 
being molded and changed yes. by the power of God. It hurts being placed upon the potter's wheel and being plucked at and being pulled at and being pushed at and being beaten and this, that, and the other. It hurts. Yes, it does. But don't forget, on the potter's wheel, you're not just getting beaten and plucked as well. You're getting the water. My Lord, I feel it. Hallelujah. You're getting the water of the Holy Ghost yes. sprinkled upon you yes, continually yes. so that He continually form you and mold you into the image of Christ. Yes. So even though you don't see it in the process, even though it seems as if all you can feel uh, is the flesh being pulled from you, sin being pulled from you, um, sin before your eyes, you saying, God, how can this change? Do not forget that the same God that started a work in you is faithful to con to uh, finish the same, work, uh, the same work that He began in praise you. Praise God. It hurts. But don't forget, at the same time while he's pulling and plucking and changing, he's as well taking the water of the Holy Spirit, taking the water of his word, and he's nourishing you and molding you and feeding you and giving you um, meat to Amen. eat and water to drink. Jesus said, I am the meat. I am the bread that comes down from heaven. And any man that eats of me, he shall never die, but he shall have everlasting life. And he said, I am the water. And if you need yes. water, I'm the water Come that on. you need. It does not matter what you need. It's found in Jesus yes. Christ. Amen. So you're going Amen. to start see, cool. seeing accoutrements of the flesh. You're going to start seeing sin in your life like you never have before. But that's a good thing. Because God the Holy Ghost wants you to take that sin. He wants you to take that flesh and submit it to Calvary. Amen. And say, God, I realize that by my, my own power and my own ability, I do not have the power or the ability to change what I see in me. But Lord, I deny my power. I deny my ability to change that thing. I take up the benefits of what you have done for me. Yeah, and yeah, now yeah. I can follow after Amen. you because I'm not trying to change it within my own. Because let me tell you something. You can't truly follow Christ as he called you to follow him if you're trying to change things in your flesh that you cannot change. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. The only way you can truly follow him is if you're depending on him in every facet of your life. And like I said, that doesn't happen overnight. It's a, it's a, it's a process. Amen. It's progressive. Progressive revelation. Continually re being, being reminded and being shown the newness and the life that's found in the message of the cross. And God's going to have to bring you, like Mike taught this morning, to some Jonah experiences. Not yes, just once. Yes. We were talking about that this afternoon. It wasn't just one time that God had to deal with the heart of Jonah. But no, Jonah got out of the well, seen a whole city repent of their sins, and God the Holy Ghost still had work to do in Jonah's yeah. heart. So if God the Holy Ghost had to change a man of God who caused the whole city to be turned upside down by the gospel of Jesus Christ, if God still had to work, uh, still had a work to do in him, I can promise you, God the Holy Ghost still has a work to do in you and me. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. And verse six: For in Christ Jesus. Neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision. Paul is just simply saying, it doesn't matter what you do or what you don't do, it's not going to help you out in this Christian walk. What you need to do is place your faith in Jesus Christ Amen. and what He's done at the cross. Am I giving you a license to sin? God forbid. Right. I'm Come not on. telling you you can go out and sin like you want to because what He says at the bottom of this verse shows me that if you're doing that, then you're really not experiencing the love oh, of Almighty on. God. If That's you right. think you can go out and sin and do as you please and do this, that, and the other, and oh, I'm still justified by grace, well, sir, ma'am, you have not truly experienced the grace and the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ because right. Paul says in the bottom of this verse that faith works by love. Amen. Faith works by love. What does that mean? Yes, I've read several commentators that says if you have true faith emanating from your life, um, then it means that the love of Christ will be flowing out of you. And, 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 and that's, that's, that's a true aspect of it because if you're truly believing in the faith that God calls you to believe in, which is Christ and Him crucified, the love of God is going to um, emanate from your mortal body. It's going to emanate from your life. But really what this verse is telling us is that the only way that faith can work, faith that God gives you, yes. the only way that it can work is through the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ because the cross is the love of God. So the cross literally, literally gives faith its power not only to birth itself within you, but it gives it its power so that you can continue to believe what first got you in. Faith works by love. It's love that causes faith to rise up in my heart and believe God's redemption plan. Because when I look to the cross, when I look to the blood that Jesus shed from me at Calvary's cross, I realize 
that that is the ultimate fulfillment of the love of God. God said, I am love. And he said, no greater love hath any man than a man lay down his life for his friends. So Amen. the greatest um, aspect, the greatest display of the love of God, and, and, and I really feel literally not only is it the greatest display, but literally it is the love of God, the cross. The cross birth faith, it births um, it births faith within us to believe him for our initial salvation. But faith not only um, worked, he didn't say faith worked by love. He said faith works, plural. It, it continues to work. Love is the avenue by which faith can have its preeminence in your life. Paul says that we need to be a people that walk by faith and not by sight. And if I'm going to walk by faith continually in this life in order that I might have victory over the sin, the world, flesh, and the devil, if I'm going to continually walk by the faith that God has prescribed for me to walk by, I must continually keep my eyes on Jesus Christ Amen. and what He's done for me at Calvary's cross Amen. because that is the love of God that causes and stirs faith to work in my life. Amen. Like I said, that faith not only gives me access to God, but that faith gives God access to me. Yes, it does. Because the cross was the meeting place of God and man. Amen. I've seen pictures before with Jesus hanging, and I'm not saying this is not how it happened, but I've seen pictures illustrated before with Jesus hanging on a cross and one side sinful man and one side a holy and a righteous God, that the cross is the bridge, so to speak, between man and between God. Not only that man might reach God, but so that God might reach man once again. Not only to save him from his sin, not only to have relationship with him, but to come into his heart and transform him into the image of his only begotten son. Amen. Because Paul said that my ultimate desire, I literally, day and night I travail in birth, that Christ would be formed in you. Amen. So faith which works by love. Faith which works by love. Faith which works by the love of Calvary's cross. Amen. That love literally energizes faith in me to be able to continue to believe God that He's going to do in me exactly what He told me He would do in me. Amen. And that ultimate thing, what God's going to do more than bless me, more than prosper me, more Come than on. Me, it, that, that ultimate thing That's right. is to conform me. That's right. To the image of His Son. Amen. Yes. Praise God. And when this message begins to get a hold of you, I can promise you, that's going to be your ultimate Amen. desire. Amen. Lord, I want to be more like You. Amen. Amen. Lord, draw me unto Yourself because, Lord, I want to know You. And I can promise you this, that just as much as you want to know God, multiply that by untimed million, hundred affinities, times and beyond. God wants to know you. Amen. More than you want to know God, That's God right. wants to know you. That's right. The only reason you want to know God is because God wants to know you. Amen. And He's drawing That's you by His sense. Spirit, That's stirring good. you by That's His good. Spirit. Amen. So that He can know you and you can know Him. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise God, John. Amen.